Howdy guys. So a lot of you may or may not know that Bernie Sanders was in the Bay Area today or this weekend. He did a rally in San Francisco apparently. I didn't know that. Yesterday morning and then last night or yesterday evening he came down here to San Jose. I went out and had some fun at Bernie Sanders rally and uh, I was only able to get one other friend to come but we had a good time. There was a couple of weird things that happened. So for the most part, it was pretty much just like the San Francisco rally. It was completely without incident. But one of the weird things that did happen was as soon as my live stream ended, it was done. It was completely blocked worldwide. I have no idea why it was blocked. It didn't make any sense to me, except that there was music playing there. However, if there's music playing in a YouTube video, you usually get the copyright, but it's not a strike against your account or anything. And it, you just, it just says that uh, ads will be played on your video where the revenue goes to the owner of those songs. And then the other weird thing that happened was this morning when I woke up to go check my uh, account and get to work, I couldn't get, get on. And of course my first thought was, my channel's deleted. It's like, oh my God. They, I, I messed up because whatever it was they did, I don't know, me attending their rally, uh, they just, they pissed, I pissed them off somehow. I, somehow I got something or whatever that, that just, it was too much. I don't know. Totally in a panic. But eventually was, I was able to see my account and still see my videos. But I just couldn't get into, I couldn't get into any uh, editor. And I was going to post all about this thinking that that's exactly what happened. Later on, I got a notification from, believe it or not, Secure Team. That's... <laughs> who I just now found out from, that this happened all across video posting websites like um, Instagram and uh, Vidmeo, yeah, it happened on, on YouTube, and uh, whatever else, there's a whole bunch of them, Snapchat, I guess, all they all went down for, I guess, around an hour this morning. So it wasn't just me, another sigh of relief and really weird very strange that all of these would go down at the same time well i would put i'm gonna put a link to his video in the description so if you know more about this do let me know so maybe if that's not the case then go ahead and just watch this video really quick this is bernie's speech that i was kind of able to get on live stream but totally lost and i am going to have other videos that i'm going to put up but i'm just going to put them all up in little little bits like you know i got ben and jerry's guy he was up there <laughs> What a nut, <laughs> pun intended. Anyways, enjoy the video, you guys. Thrive Choir, Kelsey Presnell, Vinner Walker Bacon Jr., Samina Usman, Dr. Cornell West, Danny Glover, and the future Minister of Ice Cream, Ben Cohn, and your Congressman Ro Khanna, who's doing a great job in the United States Congress. I want to welcome you all to a campaign which is not only going to win here in California, which is not only going to win the Democratic nomination, which is not only going to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country, but with your help, 
is going to transform this country and create an economy and a government that works for all of us, not just the 1%. Now, the message of our campaign is us, not me. And the reason for that is that we have got to change the culture of America. I have got four kids and seven grandchildren, and I want you to be concerned about my family. I, in turn, will be concerned about your families. And that is what a civilized, democratic society is about. We are in it together. Us, not me. And the second part of what us, not me, is about is me telling you now a truth that you're not going to see much about on TV and very few candidates for anything will tell you. And that is that we can elect a president who is honest and well-intentioned, but, but still not able to bring about the changes that we need in this country. And I will tell you why. It's not because he or she won't try. It's because we have a power structure in this country of incredibly powerful people and institutions who exert unbelievable influence over the economic and political life of this country. And we don't bring the change that we need unless we have the guts to stand up to those powerful special interests. So when we get elected and we together are in the White House, we will tell Wall Street we're going to end their greed. We are going to tell the insurance companies we are going to end their greed. We are going to tell the pharmaceutical industry we're going to end their greed. We are going to tell the prison industrial complex we're going to end their greed. We are going to tell the military industrial complex we're going to end their greed. And last but certainly not least, we are going to tell the fossil fuel industry they will not destroy this planet. And I want to welcome you to a campaign which is based on love, which is based on compassion, which is based on justice. It is a campaign and a future government that will end what Trump is doing in terms of his racism, in terms of his sexism, in terms of his homophobia, in terms of his religious bigotry. We are going to win this election because our campaign is about bringing people together, not dividing them up. Our campaign is about justice, and I mean by that economic justice, 
I mean by that social justice, I mean by that re racial justice, and environmental justice. I get around the country a bit, and I am here to tell you that the working class of this country is sick and tired of working two or three jobs and seeing almost all of the new income and wealth going Did to the top 1%. The American people are tired of seeing 500,000 people who are homeless in this country in San Francisco, in San Jose, and in Burlington for a month. The American people are sick and tired of having to pay 40, 50, 60 percent of their limited incomes in housing. The American people are tired of leaving college with enormous debts that will take them decades to pay off. The American people are tired of trade agreements that shut down profitable companies in America and go to low-wage countries abroad. So what we are fighting for is a government and an economy that represents the needs of the American people. So today we say to the private insurance companies that whether they like it or not, the United States will join every other major country on earth and guarantee health care to all people as a right, not a privilege. Now, the drug companies and the insurance companies will spend hundreds of millions of dollars to maintain the current dysfunctional health care system. This is a system that makes billions of dollars in profit for the insurance companies while 34 million Americans have no health insurance and many of you are underinsured with high deductibles and high co-payments. We believe in a health care system which allows any person in this country to go to the doctor whenever they need to go to the doctor. We believe in a health care system which says that after you leave the hospital, you don't have to worry about your family going bankrupt. <laughs> health care is a human right, and we are going to bring that right together to the American people. And when we talk about health care, we are going to end big time the outrageous greed of the drug companies. I would like to see that. I would love to see last that. Year, drug companies come last year, last year alone, the top 10 drug companies made $69 billion in profit. Got that? You know why they make so much money? Because they charge us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. In fact, in fact, they charge us any price they want. And one out of five Americans today, people who are sick, people who go to the doctor and get a prescription, cannot afford to fill that prescription. Brothers and sisters, that is insane. We're going to end it. We're going to cut drug prices in half in this country. This is the wealthiest country in the world. 
And we should not have half of our people living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I know a little about paycheck to paycheck because that's the family that I grew up in. And what it means is if your car breaks down today and you need 500 bucks to get it fixed and you don't have that 500 bucks, you can't get to work. And if you can't get to work, you get fired. And if you get fired, you can't feed your kids. And all over this country, people are scared to death, living under enormous anxiety that maybe their kid will get sick, maybe they'll end up in the hospital, and they have no idea in the world how they're going to pay those bills. So what we say today, that in America, if you work 40 hours a week, you will not live in poverty. We are going to raise the federal minimum wage to a living wage at least 15 bucks an hour. And we are going to end the absurdity of women making 80 cents on the dollar compared to men. We believe in equal pay for equal work. Now next week, on Wednesday, I'm going to be going to Arkansas. I guess there's an airport near here. We're going to be going to Arkansas, which is the home of the Walmart Corporation. And let me give you some examples of what a rigged economy is about and what we are going to transform. The Walton family, as some of you may know, the family that owns Walmart, is the wealthiest family in America. It is worth $175 billion. Got that? $175 billion. That's real money. And yet, that family worth $175 billion pays its workers wages that are so low that many of those workers are forced to go on food stamps, Medicaid, and subsidized housing. And who pays for those workers' food stamps and Medicaid? So my message to the Walton family next week will be, we are sick and tired of giving you corporate welfare. The working class of this country will not subsidize the wealthiest family in America. Pay your workers a living wage. Last year, I received a number of complaints from workers at Amazon. Amazon is owned by the wealthiest individual in this country, a guy named Jeff Bezos. Woo! Now, he's not quite as wealthy as the Walton family. He is only worth about $114 billion. He's struggling. It's tough. He wants to catch up to the Waltons, but he's not quite there yet. And we heard from workers at Amazon, and they said, Bernie, we are getting starvation wages and our working conditions are terrible. Well, we work with those employees and we were able to get Amazon to raise their minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. But that's only half of the story when we talked about a rigged economy. Turns out that last year, the wealthiest guy in the country, Mr. Bezos, who owns Amazon, saw his company make $11 billion in profit. Not bad. How much money 
did Amazon pay in taxes last year? Zero. San Jose is a really smart crowd here. Thank you. Okay, you're right. He paid zero. So here is what the rigged economy is about. Wealthiest family in America paying their workers starvation wages, getting bailed out by working people. The wealthiest individual in this country owning a company that made 11 billion and not paying a nickel in taxes. Brothers and sisters, together we are going to end that rigged economy. It's still a nice park despite the airport. And when Amazon and dozens of other corporations that pay nothing today in taxes start paying their fair share of taxes, when we do away with these tax havens all over the world where billionaires are putting their money to avoid fair taxation, when we do that, we are going to have the money in this country to do some extraordinary things. We are going to pass a transaction tax on Wall Street speculation, which will raise enough money to make public colleges and universities tuition free. I want everybody in this country who has the desire and the ability to be able to get the higher education they need to go out and get the good jobs that are out there. And I'll tell you something else that we're going to do. It is an outrage beyond words, and I've talked to so many people impacted by this, that young people go to school and they borrow and borrow in order to get their degree. And then after being in debt, 50, $100,000, it takes them year after year after year to pay off that student debt. People in America should not be punished for trying to get a good education. I agree, but I guess it depends on what subjects you're together, taking. Together, we are going to substantially reduce the level of student debt in America. Brothers and sisters, Donald Trump embarrasses us every day. He embarrasses us with his effort to try to divide our nation up. He embarrasses us with his religious bigotry. And I want to say thank you to all of our Muslim friends who are here today for celebrating. He embarrasses us with his ugly immigration policies and his demonization of immigrants. But there's something that he does that is above and beyond embarrassment. And that is he endangers our country and the entire world by refusing to understand what the scientific community is loud and clear about. And that is climate change is real. Climate change is caused by human activity. And climate change is already causing devastating problems in our country and around the world. Now, it seems to me that we have a moral responsibility to make certain that the planet we leave our children and grandchildren is a planet that is healthy and is habitable. That is a moral responsibility. So today we say to the fossil fuel industry that it is not acceptable that you think your short-term profits are more important than the future of this planet. 
Now, all of you know that climate change is not just an American issue. It is an issue that impacts virtually every country on Earth. And here is a promise I will make to you today, that as your president, I will lead the world. We will have the United States lead the world to bring countries together. And our message will be that instead of spending a trillion and a half dollars every year all over the world on weapons of destruction, weapons designed to kill each other, why don't we use that wealth to transform the global energy system and save the planet? I want to say a word, and actually I want to speak to the men Vice more President than the women of Mexico, All of you Nixon, are aware when GFK was shot. that in Alabama that. and in Georgia and other states, <laughs> legislation is being passed which denies the women of this country the constitutional right to control their bodies. as president will do everything I can and a president can do a lot to make sure that it is women and not politicians who control the bodies of women. I have been asked by the media whether I have any litmus tests regarding those that I would nominate to be Supreme Court justices. And let me tell you that I do have a litmus test. I will never nominate anyone to be a Supreme Court justice unless I am 100% convinced that that individual will defend to the death Roe versus Wade. to the men who are here today. This is not a woman's issue. This is an issue for all of us. And now is the time for the men of this country to stand with the women. I want to say a word about another issue that tragically is on the front pages today. And that is the mass murder that you are all aware of that <laughs> took place in Virginia Beach. I'm sorry. And I don't know what to say about this. Because every time there's a mass murder, the media says, what do you think? And everyone says the same old thing. So I'm not here to tell you that in a nation that has hundreds of millions of guns, hundreds of millions of guns, that in a nation which sadly has many mentally unstable people who own some of those guns. I am not here to tell you True. that I have any magical solution on how to end the mass gun violence we're seeing and have seen throughout this country. But this is what I will tell you. I will do everything I can to pass common sense gun safety legislation. And among many other things that has to be done, 30 years ago I ran for office, lost the election, and maybe I lost it, because 30 years ago when I ran for Congress in Vermont, I said that assault weapons are military weapons designed to kill large numbers of people in a few minutes. Those are weapons that 
a civilian society should not have. I said it then, and I say it now. Let us ban. Let us ban the sale and distribution of military-style assault weapons in this country. Yeah. I want to say a word about another issue, and that is the need to reform a broken criminal justice system. This is America. We should not have more people in jail than any other country on earth. And that is why instead of spending $80 billion a year locking people up, we're going to use some of that money to invest in our young people, making sure they get the jobs and the education that they need. We'll use that money for our young people rather than building more jails and having more incarcerations. Now, we made some progress on this issue four years ago. When I was campaigning here in California, I said that if we're going to have real criminal justice reform, we need to end the war on drugs and legalize yes. marijuana. Yes. Yes. And that is exactly what we have to do, and that idea is spreading all across the country. It's true. And when we talk about criminal justice reform, we're going to end private prisons and detention centers. And we're going to end the system that allows 400,000 people to be in jail today for the crime of being poor and not being able to afford cash bail. And there's another issue that I know is a sensitive issue here in California, and in fact all over the country. And that is the fact that we have a president who demonizes immigrants. Well, we are going to end that demonization, and together we are going to pass <laughs> comprehensive immigration reform and a path toward citizenship. We are going to provide immediate, as soon as we can, legal protection for the 1.8 million young people in this country eligible for the DACA program. And we are going to initiate a new border policy. America is not and must never be a nation in which babies are snatched from the arms of their mothers, where families are separated, where children are put in cages. We will develop a humane, respectful border policy. So brothers and sisters, here we are today in an unprecedented moment in American history. We have a president who is a pathological liar. We have a president who is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, and a xenophobe. And that's his good qualities. All right, but our job is to end that kind of divisiveness and that kind of hatred we are seeing sprouting up all over this country. Our job is to understand that if we think big, not small, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. Yes, we can create a Medicare for that, all if system. You're think, think big. Yes. Yes, we can make public colleges and universities tuition free. Yes, we can raise the minimum wage to a living wage and create millions of good paying jobs 
by rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure and by combating climate change through a Green New Deal. Yes, we can end a broken and racist criminal justice system and significantly reduce the people who are now in jail. And yes, we can have a humane and decent immigration system. On all of those issues and many more, the majority of the American people support us. But that support doesn't mean anything if people are not involved in the political process. So what the political revolution that I'm asking you to participate in is about is not only fighting for progressive policies, but it is going out and bringing your friends and family and co-workers into the political revolution. Now it is true, it is sadly and absolutely true that the top 1% in this country has enormous wealth and enormous power. That is true. They control the economy, they control the Congress, they control the media. But at the end of the day, the 1% is 1%. Which is you. And I may not be a Nobel Prize winning mathematician, but I do know that 99% is a heck of a lot bigger number than 1%. In other words, they have the money, they have the power, we have the people. So our job right now and in the next eight months is to bring our people together. And when you go out and you talk to your friends and they say, where, well, where were you yesterday? And you said, I went to a Bernie Sanders rally. To you, why do you get involved in politics? Don't you know it's all bullshit? Yep. <laughs> and you tell them that you are sick and tired of hearing them talk about how they can't afford rent, how they're not making enough money, how they're worried about climate change, how they're paying off their student debt. Tell them to shut up or put up. So we have got to bring our friends, our family, and our co-workers into the political process. And when we do that, when millions of people stand up and demand justice in this country, brothers and sisters, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. Thank you all very much.